Hey guys, if you're not a paid subscriber to the show, please take a moment and subscribe now. Starting today, we are introducing the Nick DiPaolo Show phone line where you can call up and leave a message for me to play and respond to on the show. This number is only available to subscribers. You'll also get access to the daily Encore episode, which nobody else gets, and hundreds of show archives. Plus, you'll get a discount on merch and free merch depending on what level you subscribe at. Uh, you can do all this at thecomicsgym.com and click on an Encore episode or patreon.com slash the Nick DiPaolo show. Thanks for supporting, and I can't wait to hear what some of you guys and gals have to say. Talk to you soon. Hi, snap. Hi, folks. Welcome to the big show on a Wednesday already. Thank Christ. Uh, Good show because I'll tell you, this country is coming apart at the seams. It's all fucking intentional. Anyways, let's get right to the N-word. I can't stop. I'm going to get the... In the N-word segment tonight, Dems are trying to launch an effort to win the 2022 midterms by disqualifying Republicans who supported the effort to challenge Biden's win as insurrectionists. (laughs) Boy, if this isn't proof, they know they're going to get shellacked like an antique desk or Pelosi's 70-year-old tits or a biological female swimming against Big Dick Leah Thomas. They're using a provision of the post-Civil War 14th Amendment that was created to disqualify former Confederates who engaged in rebellion or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. This effort's being led by Mark Elias. He's a lawyer for the Dems, an idiot who spearheaded the Russian hoax, which did what? Challenged the 2016 results when Trump won. You fucking idiots. How about the many Dems who objected to certification results in the past? Not even going to bring up Bush versus Gore. Uh, the effort is uh, going to sink like Biden's balls in toilet water. Come November 2022, 20, uh, the Dem Party should just bend over it and take it like a man. Whoops, I want to be inclusive. Take it like a trans, non binary, gender fluid, goo gobbling Marxist fag. The end. Let's get going with the show, shall we? Well, we're waiting. Okay, (laughs) we're here. The first story, uh, this one, I'm telling you, I've been doing the show a long time, and um, this might be the most outrageous. This one I thought the left couldn't get any fucking nuttier. New York, oh my God. uh, Calm down, Nick, okay. I wish they still made Sanka, do they? Manhattan's new DA, he's a black fella. Remember what I said about Eric Adams? being a a fucking wolf in sheep's clothing, uh, however it goes. Uh, Manhattan's new DA, black fella, has ordered his prosecutors to stop seeking prison sentences for hordes of criminals and to downgrade felony charges in cases including armed robberies, you heard me right, uh, drug dealing, according to a set of progressive policies made public Tuesday. (laughs) downgrade armed robbery and shit. If you guys don't see that this is, if you were a fucking enemy of the United States, like George Soros is, who supports people like this, maybe not him specifically, if you can't see that this is an intentional effort to undo this society as we know it, then fucking, you shouldn't be watching the show. It's, ay ay ay. his name's Bragg. Of course it is. And I'm dumber than fuck it. I'm dumb, y'all. I'm dumb. In his first memo to staff on Monday, Alvin, Alvin! There he is. 
fucking other overweight fucking civil servant fat fuck who pretends to work for you. In his first memo, staff uh, on Monday, Alvin Bragg said his office will not seek carceral sentence, that means prison, uh, incarceration, get it, except with homicides and a handful of other cases. So you have to kill somebody or, you know, rape somebody on a sidewalk at noontime in front of Starbucks, and you might get some time, including domestic violence, felonies, some sex crimes. So there are some that you're not going to go to jail for. Well, I saw a couple of girls, uh, well, about 24. Oh, yeah, I'm not in New York. I'm in Georgia. I'll be shot. Uh, some sex crimes and public corruption. This rule may be uh, accepted only in extraordinary circumstances based on a, here comes the fucking left-wing lib bullshit that will go over anybody's head who has a life. Uh, on a holistic analysis of the facts, criminal history, and the victim's input. Because when somebody rapes your wife, he should have an input into what happens to him, according to shithead. This is why there's never been a successful black leader other than MLK Jr. as far as running a country. I don't give a fuck if that sounds racist. I don't give a fuck, okay? Uh, victims input, particularly in a case of violence or trauma. And any other information available, the memo reads. What you just said. Oh my God, help is me. Is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. May God have mercy on your soul. It's already outrageous enough, right? If, he, if this was new and you'd be like, what? But it's coming on the heels of that whole bail reform thing, giving us enough evidence that that made crime go through the roof. And this is their answer to it, doubling down or tripling down on it. So don't tell me they're not trying to dismantle New York City, you know, the most important city in the country, um, and why you guys are still living there. I don't give a fuck. Well, I got a job. I don't care. Become a farmer. Move to fucking Vermont. Assistant, di <laughs> pick another state, Idaho. Assistant district attorneys, listen to this, must also now keep in mind the impacts of incarceration. He's telling you, never mind the victims, never mind the woman that got shot or beat to death. Keep in mind what this jail time's going to do to this guy. That's exactly how they're telling you to think. <sighs> Including whether it really does increase public safety. Okay, let me, let me consider that. I'm going to pretend I'm working for him. Let me see, a guy just raped and killed a, if we take him off the street, oh, that's right, he, if he killed someone, I guess you get jail time. Okay, he beat a Chinese lady with an inch of a life. If I, we put him in jail, would that help? Yeah, I think it, it's that simple. Including whether it really does increase public safety, potential future barriers, uh, convicts involving housing and employment, because that's what you should be thinking about. When your sister gets raped and you go to trial and, I don't want this guy to be turned down at McDonald's in Detroit if he goes for a job 30 years from now, or five minutes from now, I should say. Housing and employment, uh, the financial cost of prison, and the, well, if that's the problem, let's fry him a week after we bust him. Seriously, let's go all China fucking Tehran on his ass if you're worrying about money. I'm fucking dead serious. If you get a guy on film or a woman shooting and killing somebody or raping somebody, and we know, positive identification, saliva, fucking hang him like a cow upside down, slit his filthy throat, and do it within a month of the... Fu I'm fucking dead serious. Stick due process up your ass when you have a guy on video or a person committing the crime. That's all I'm going to say. You want to see a deterrent? And do it, like I said, at a halftime during an NFL game or a baseball, where there's a ton of eyes on it. They sort of do that in Iran. They're not wrong about everything, except for they're doing it to innocent people. Uh, anyways, the financial, that'll cut down the cost. And the racial disparities, oh, here it comes, over who gets time. Because we all know those black and brown prisons, you know, they fill black and 70%, uh, they're all in there unjustly. You know that, don't you? In cases where prosecutors do seek to put a convict behind bars, the request can be for no more than 20 years for a determinate sentence, meaning one that can't be reviewed or changed by a parole board. 
The office shall not seek a sentence of life without parole, period. <laughs> that means you could massacre a family, uh, be a serial fucking rapist, but there's a chance. No, Nick, they don't mean those. Yeah, they do. And if they don't now, they will. It's, look where we are, folks. All the conservatives, I used to say slippery slope, and you'd be like, oh, you're fucking racist, you're paranoid. Look where we are. Bragg's memo also detailed the following instructions. I haven't even got to the good shit. For prosecutors to reduce charges filed by cops in various cases. So he's telling already. Prosecutors to, to reduce the cops out there risking it. Armed robbers who use guns or other deadly weapons to stick up stores and other businesses will be prosecuted only for petty larceny. What? what? A misdemeanor. Why are we working for a living, folks? What are we doing? We're following the fucking laws. Crime doesn't pay. If I had a choice between, and I love what I'm doing, I love you people, I'd rather go fucking smash and grab. I'm Italian. I know how to do it. Uh, provided no victims were seriously injured. Oh, so you... <laughs> And there's no genuine risk of physical harm to anyone. I, it, it, if this isn't all over the news tonight, I'll be very disappointed. Uh, I was going to say move to Canada, but this worse in this country. Armed robbery, a Class B felony, would typically be punishable by a maximum of 25 years in prison, while petty larceny uh, subjects uh, offenders to up to 364 days in jail and a thousand dollar fine. What the Convicted criminals caught with weapons other than guns will have those felony charges downgraded to misdemeanor. What, like a spork? <laughs> to misdemeanors unless they're also charged with more serious offenses. Criminal possession of a weapon in the third degree, a Class D felony, is punishable by up to seven years behind bars. Uh, burglars who steal, listen to this, this one got me. Burg this applies to you people in the suburbs mostly. Burglars who steal from residential storage areas... That would be like your tool shed out back. Parts of homes that aren't accessible to the living area. Why don't you just mail my key to them? I, I can't believe what I'm reading. And businesses located in mixed-use buildings will be prosecuted for a low-level Class D felony that only covers break-ins instead of more serious crimes. In other words... What's funny is my sister just built this big room that's not attached to her house. I mean, it's like, it's like a huge, it's not attached. You walk about 25 feet, but it's, they had Thanksgiving in there. It's beautiful. So somebody could bust into that and get a slap on the wrist. Holy shit. Again, if that was New York. Um, yeah, Class D felony. Uh, that only covers break-ins instead of more. Uh, those more serious crimes, Class B and Class C felonies, would be punishable up to 25 and up to 15 years in prison, respectively. Drug dealers believed to be acting as low-level agent of a seller <laughs> uh, will be prosecuted. Boy, these really benefit a certain segment of the population, huh? Uh, well... Prosecuted only for misdemeanor possession. Also, suspected dealers will only be prosecuted on felony charges if they're also accused of more serious crimes or actual caught in the act of... Uh, I think you guys get the message here. But, uh, that felony would mean facing uh, up to seven whatever the fuck. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Take it easy. Yeah, you gotta grow up. You gotta grow up. New York? Again, I want to blame you people who vote or whatever the fuck for the mayor, but I'm at the point where I don't think any of these people get elected. They get appointed. So I don't know who to yell at. But I told you that Adams, I think he started the whole, the, the police had this black police association or whatever in New York. I think he was at the, you know, he was not your typical fucking, uh, cop, hard-nosed, like, anyways, 
headline, Dumb Black Bitches. That's not fair. I'm just reading what the, um, the fella sent to me. What? <laughs> I can't lie. Two Arizona State University students, we cover this a little bit, this is the update, who were reprimanded after a viral video showed them confronting white, so it's two black chicks. They haven't even said that yet, have they? Two black chicks, hateful, racist, fucking black, you call them, you, you know, we have Karens, these are Taniquas, confronting white students studying uh, in a campus multicultural center last year, have accused the school of openly discriminating against them. Here's the letter they wrote. I can't believe they know how to write. Dear white people, also known as ASU, you openly discriminated against us on November 16th when you handed down your decision from your racially biased investigation, the students, Marasani Cure and uh, Sarah Ticola said in a more than nine minute video, oh my God, what have we turned this country in? posted to social media last week. We're being persecuted for defending our multicultural center from racism and sexism. ASU is a violent place. Here's the two dumb whores right here who probably got in because of, uh, you know, some stipulation, like minorities, we need a blacker campus. Uh, the pair was seen in a viral video in September confronting two white male students who were studying in a multicultural space whatever the fuck that is, accusing them of racism. One of the male students in the video had a sticker on his computer reading Police Lives Matter, while the other student was seen wearing a shirt saying, do not vote for Biden. They throw that in the story, hoping it kind of balances it. Um, they say, the girls say, this is the violence that ASU does, and this is the type of people that they protect, okay? This is... White man thinks he can, why white man can thinks he can take up our space. And this is why we need a multicultural space, because they think they can get away with this shit. One of the female uh, whores told her male peers uh, in the video. I don't know what you're smiling at, watermelon. Let's take a look at uh, these two white guys are just minding their business. We did this story back in September, whatever the fuck, minding their business at a, a, a multicultural spot. Just let that sink in for a second. And, and, and here comes Taniqua and Taniqua. What did I do wrong? You have a bad... You're, you're offensive. <laughs> Police lives matter? You have the same you're, sticker. We're just trying to do school. What? You guys have the same sticker as the other... But this is our space. We've got a Police Lives Matter sticker and we're getting kicked out. <laughs> Can't do school. Nobody's you, you just said we have to leave. No, I said... You're making this you space said uncomfortable. You're uncomfortable. But you're white. Do you understand what a multicultural space? It means you're not being centered. White's not a culture? No. No, it's not a culture. <laughs> it's white is not a culture. Uh, there's your college kids today. How the fuck you could watch that out there and send your kids to college? You should be arrested for child abuse or whatever the fuck. Are you fucking kidding me? <clears throat> They come over, start an argument, and then saying, you're making me this place uncomfortable. You're psychotic. Can you imagine being a white kid that age and trying to go to school with these fucking idiots? What keeps him from not strangling that bitch? Why? Because if he looks at her wrong, he's going to go to prison. Stupid fucks. And that's fine, you know? And they're pissed. They're the ones getting treated uh, unequally. This is our space. Well, multicultural. White culture is more important than any other fucking culture in this country. You've been saying it. I'm not racist. I'm just studying, the kid said, responding to the morons. Then he said before leaving, I pay the same fucking tuition. I wish we had that as you. I'm working 60 hours a week while going to school because my parents don't just give me my Her parents don't give her money either. The government does, Okay. She don't have no parents, Auntie Pam. An investigation was launched, and a Qureshi and Take a Lauer, your, your names offend me. Get out of my country. Go back the fuck to where you came from, which I mean Baltimore and Detroit. Charged, I don't mean, you know, charged with an Arizona Board of Regents Code of Conduct violation in November, according to the ASU students. Ooh, I bet you they got punished severely. 
the state press, they were found guilty of interfering with university activities. This was an insufficient evidence to find them responsible for violating harassment policy. Really? That's not harassment, what they did to those white guys? They're talking about the black girls, right? Insufficient evidence. That's not harassing? What's, what, what do you, how does your policy read? How about if they were sitting there and two white guys came up and started that shit? You think it would fall under harassment policies? This is fucking, between this story and what's going on in New York, the fucking country is coming apart at the city. It has been for a while, but now, holy shit. And if you talk about it like me, it's going to get fucking whatever. I can't even go on YouTube where the real people are. Ugh. These blacks. Who knows where they're going to take the wrong way? I do. Their punishment was writing a three-page paper. Was it really? That was it. Well, that is quite a punishment for the black chick to get three sentences out. Their punishment was to write a three-page paper without saying like or without fucking misconjugating a verb. We be angry. No, that's allowed too, remember? Oh, that's allowed too. That's true. It's actually, it's required to get in, I think. You have to speak at a fifth grade street level. Nice country. Boy, I'd like to grab Biden by his scrawny fucking windpipe. I'm talking about Jill. Uh, Pennsylvania has become the latest location where fights filled with illegal fights. <laughs> that would work too. Flights, I'm sorry, folks. Flights filled with illegal immigrants are being flown under the cover of dark. Good. You fucking kept Trump from winning. I hope your state looks like fucking uh, Nigeria in a month. Ooh, I don't feel good. Too much coffee. Flown under the cover of darkness. That's not racist, according to reports. At least five flights carrying the illegal immigrants landed at airports in Scranton and Allentown last month from Texas. Uh... Local outlet WFMZ reported former GOP congressional Lou Barletta, Republican, who was running for Pennsylvania governor, uh, claimed, I'm not even trusting him. He looks to, you know what I mean? I, 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 now, next time I hear Republican, I want a fucking guy from Alabama missing his front tooth. Seriously, but graduated some fucking college. And he's just, his neck is like he played, you know, he's a center. Running for Pennsylvania uh, governor claimed the flights were sent <clears throat> at night by the Biden administration. And he could hear this coming out of the plane. Excuse me, flight attendant. Why did they get to do that? We can't. Uh, Barletta said one flight had landed at Lehigh Valley International Airport in Allentown last Thursday. The others were directed to Scranton, Joe's Old Town. <laughs> Excuse me. I wonder if he'll go back there now. Uh, Scranton International Airport a week earlier. Let's take a look at the videotape. They got caught. Uh, there, nobody was up front. Nobody knew it was happening. And, and after they got caught, there were crickets for answers. I asked Governor Wolf, you know, did he know about this? Uh, were they vaccinated? And I'm not only talking about for COVID. In Pennsylvania law, it requires any minors before they can go to school to have polio, hepatitis, mumps, measles, chicken pox. Uh, where uh, were their criminal background checks done? And where were they going? Should all right. And uh, you're asking all the wrong questions. Those are questions you'd ask if it was legal, you fucking idiot. You should be going, how is this even constitutional? You should be putting a committee together to impeach the motherfucker. Not going, are they vaccinated? So you already accepted you're going to let them in. See what I'm saying? Fucking false, fake Republican, rhino. A lot of these guys have just said already... They're part of it. They're part of the global thing. Fucking Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell. Are they vaccinated? Do they have call? Is that what you're asking, really? And not going, what the fuck does he think he's doing? Have the National Guard beat him there, if you're serious. I got to start running for something. <laughs> not Georgia, it's too blue. Oh, God. 
Democrat Rep. Uh, Matt Cartwright denied the flights. Oh, then he denied it, did he? Uh, denied the flights were conducted in secret. Well, why are they coming in between 12 and 6 a.m.? Uh, saying they were authorized by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and were carrying unaccompanied immigrants. Oh, in that case, they're unaccompanied immigrant children. <clears throat> Fine, man, that's, 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 that makes a big difference. So they're going to meet up with people who are already snuck in. Is that what you're saying? Or are we supposed to believe they're going to set up camp themselves as 12-year-olds? And Pull my finger. He added that the children were sent to their parents <laughs> or approved sponsors. What is Goodyear getting involved in fucking Budweiser? After lending, uh, after lending, after lending in Scranton, after landing in Scranton. Uh, but Barletta said it was impossible to know whether everyone on board uh, was underage. Do you feel his fake interest? The Lehigh Valley Airport confirmed it had received charter flights from HHS, Human Health Services, and uh, that future flights were scheduled. So get ready to hear this every time you go out in your backyard. You're going to hear that coming from the apartment below you in Jeopardy Zone. Telemundo. Or fucking Afghanis, not just Latinos. Yeah, pick one. We're letting people in from countries that are sworn enemies of this country. You guys have no idea what you're in for five years from now. You know how we were reporting all the rapes last year in Sweden and Finland? Fucking white girls being raped by Afghanis and shit. It's all coming to a theater near you. Nice going, Dems. Under grant assurances with the Federal Aviation, the FAA, and its federally ob obligated public use airport, the Lehigh Northampton Airport Authority does not have the ability to discriminate against any aeronautical activity by refusing or denying aircraft from a... Is that right? So if China flew it over right now, right? Came over and said, hey, we want to park it here. You no right to... From arriving or departing Lehigh Valley International Airport, an airport line cocksucker said in a statement. The Biden administration has already allowed uh, plane loads of illegal immigrants to be flown into New York and Florida in recent months. <laughs> More than a dozen uh, charter flights carrying underage immigrants landed in Westchester, my old stomping grounds, in August alone. The post learned, boy, did I get out of there. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Biden administration secretly sent over 70 flights to Jacksonville, Florida over the summer, Governor Ron DeSantis' office claimed. What are you doing about it, Ron? Just the facts, ma'am. Uh... You can't do that, it, it, literally. <laughs> this is the people's country. What a farce. I guess it's all good, though. I, he might be a blessing in disguise, Biden. I don't know, because he's exposing it all or whatever. Or it's just going to continue. You know what I mean? Whether DeSantis gets in there. I don't know who to believe anymore. I really don't. Next story, ball biter. What? A 63-year-old woman in South Carolina, uh-oh, is it Marjorie Taylor Green? <laughs> is in legal trouble after she was accused of biting a paramedic's groin last month <laughs> during a chaotic scene at Charleston County a Jail. Getting your crotch, that's a dangerous fucking thing. <laughs> Gina Darlene McGee, definitely a white woman. Oh! Sorry, white fella. No, white woman. Fucking looks like Tommy Noba flying back up with the Falcons back in the 60s. I don't know if you remember. <laughs> Look at this poor woman. Couldn't get a prick stuck in her in a men's prison in Turkey. I always say Turkey, I don't know. Gina Darlene McGee, how are you, honey? This is her high school yearbook picture. She attempted to drop off a family member. Oh, great family at a jail on the morning of December 28th after accusing the unidentified individual of taking her cell phone and using it to look up inappropriate pictures. Well, <laughs> well you just admitted you had inappropriate pictures on there. She was called back to the uh, Al Cannon detention. Oh, Al Cannon. <laughs> That's the name of the place? Al Cannon Detention Center. Al was a real ball buster. 
uh, but refused. The news, news station reported that. And an arrest warrant was issued. Uh, once back at the facility, they went and got her. She's accused of resisting arrest and allegedly swiped a stun gun. This is mommy. From one of the deputies. What a country of dog shit. She was eventually restrained, but paramedics were called to the scene after she held her breath for some time. Let her die. What is she, two years old with her mother in a super? I want those cookies. She is accused of uh, biting one of the reporters in the groin area. Well, if you're going to get bit... Problem. You're a fucking she problem. She sure is. Fucking Dr. White, onking, jam rag, arking, spunk bubble, I'm telling you, H. You keep looking at me, I'm going to put you in the fucking ground, I promise you. Not this time. You ever see that movie, Dell? Which one is that? That's uh, Sexy Beast. Nah. Oh my God, I know what you like, dude. You will thank me. Ben Kingsley in the scariest role ever. Just plays a little fucking maniac. Uh, she was charged with assault and battery, unlawful conduct toward a child, and other offenses. Oh, that's too bad. If I could have grabbed this microphone, I'd beat your brains out with it because that's what she deserves. That's what she deserves. <laughs> How do people's lives go? <laughs> Three days after Christmas, she's biting a paramedic's balls at a prison. <laughs> Come on, Hallmark, get on that story. Uh, some crazy bitches out here, including this one. This was a, a good story. I studied it for like an hour and a half. <clears throat> Dallas took two and a half hours to edit the uh, clip. A woman in Argentina apparently stripped to her dirty underclothes, yummy, yum, to her underclothes. Who calls it underclothes? Her goddamn underwear or her fucking panties and bra underclothes. What, did she get a tuxedo on under her fucking skirt? And tied, uh, it, tied, we gotta fix these. <laughs> Tried to wear her dress as a mask to avoid an ice cream shop's mask rule. I did that. I ripped the lady's uh, <laughs> skirt off going into a CVS. Nobody said anything down here. Anyways, uh, <laughs> she takes her dress off and puts it over her face so she can get an ice cream. A, she was a hoa. <laughs> B, she was a hoa. Uh, she said, don't ask for my uh, face mask. I'm putting it on, she reportedly told staff members at the location in Godoy Cruz, a city in the western province of Mendoza. The New York Post reported on to The clip showed a man walk up to the counter with his three daughters as the woman enters behind them and tries to tie her dress around her dirty Argentinian face. I'm kidding, you're a good lady. Go ahead, roll tape. Come on, girls. Let me buy a chocolate chip ice cream and... I'll get strawberry for you, sir. Oh, look at the tits on that one. <laughs> look at this. Look at the dad. If I'm the dad, I go, girls, go outside. I got to talk to this bro. <laughs> <laughs> the poor old man. He's getting a Raltney. That looks like the beginning of a porn film. <laughs> then dad starts banging her and there's a pig pile. At least that's how I direct it. No, that's terrible. I don't involve children. Um, you know what's funny? She, that had nothing to do with getting an ice cream and shit. That broad, like young girls all over the country, I said it to Dallas. I even knew this when I was young, dating hot chicks. They have to be seen. That's why they want to go to nightclubs on the way. They, want, they have to be seen. And with selfies today, they cannot walk by a fucking mirror without taking a picture of their own ass or... I mean, they did it back in my day, but there weren't as many ways to... But you put on the internet today, there'll be like a stunning Russian girl, like a 23-year-old, pretending to teach you yoga when she knows she, you're beating her your dick like a red-headed stepchild. Nothing to do with downward facing dog. Fucking, my bedroom looks like an explosion at Baskin-Robbins by the time I'm done. That's all that was about. She wanted to go viral because she's got a nice body. That's all that's about. You think she eats ice cream? You see her stomach? The fuck out of here. Not for nothing to you. See the tits on a bitch. <laughs> Although the man's mask was, look, whoever wrote this, was that a girl? They, they have to take a shot, even though what she did was totally insane. Although the man's mask was below his nose, 
<laughs> Again, because it's a white guy. Uh, he was permitted to order. Oh, what a fucking... Then, then they put however he adjusted his mask over his nose. Maybe he's trying to get a whiff of that lady. <laughs> As not to break the rules. The woman was reportedly refused service and was seen leaving the shop. That's discrimination. <laughs> Local news outlet Kronika reported that the woman, who was with a group of bitches, about 10 other people, finally managed to get her sweet treat when one of them secured a mask, the post. Thank you for giving her the happy ending. I mean that in many ways. Oh, my God, help us, our father who fought it in him. Is this the last story? Last one. Well, folks, it went very quick today, didn't it? But I'm not done yet. Especially for you uh, people who signed up at the, on a monthly level. You got a couple stories coming to you. Uh, well, that's called a tease. Just like that girl who just came in for a mint chocolate chip and showed her dirty ass. A stinky story. Now, what could this be about? Oh, yeah, we covered this woman, too. Oh, God. You know what's scary about this? This woman who farts in jars of beautiful and sells her farts. This is the most sane thing we talked about today. This actually makes sense. A reality TV star who launched a gassy venture, oh, hilarious, peddling her fancy flatulence to strangers, Stephanie Matto, th oh, Matto, oh, Steffi, naughty little girl, you need a dirty spanking. Stephanie Maddow, 31, blew away people. All right, we get the fart jokes, you fucking titless mind fucker. Uh, uh, on social media, when she recently announced that she makes more than, I don't ever want to hear pretty women complain about anything ever again. I don't give a fuck if you have bone cancer. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> she makes more than 50 grand a week selling her farts. Selling her farts. <laughs> That'll be $450. <laughs> ka -ching. More than 50 grand a week. Not a month. A week. Can you imagine if she actually shit in the glass? That's going to be 150 a week. <laughs> I'm telling you. A lot of German people out there. <laughs> Do you understand, folks? This is a fart from her ass, not a queef. I gotta believe a queef would be worth three times that. If I know what a queef is. The Connecticut resident had gained, oh, from Connecticut. <laughs> I thought she was like from Germany or something. The Connecticut resident had gained international recognition because we live on the dumbest planet in the solar system. After appearing on the reality show, 90 Day Fiance, what was that, her talent part of the show? I'm going to fucking drop a uh, deuce. on, And later started her own YouTube channel. <laughs> we're done as a species, as a country, as a planet. Wrote books. Oh, I bet you they were terrific. <laughs> Scratch and sniffs. And founded an X-rated subscription site called Unfiltered. She then really made waves with her affectatory. I never heard that word. Affectatory? Affectatory? What is it? Olfactory. I thought it was two Fs. Nope, just oh, is that an L? Olfactory. Okay, here it's two Fs. Blended, I mean. Olfactory business by capturing her emission in jars and selling them because she thought it'd be a hilarious publicity move that would get a lot of people's attention. No, that's not why. You know damn well this guy's a sick bucks. But after making 200 grand in sales, is this really true? God, she's fucking. Wait till she starts lactating at the jar. The influencer has announced her retirement. <laughs> oh, my God. You know why? As easy as that is, it's easier for her to go blow some guy who's a trillionaire and hang out with him and sponge the next 10 years. I personally, I'm selling parts on Craigslist. I fight into balloons and I tie them off. I'm getting like 11, 12 cents a pop. Retirement when she passed uh, one too many and got the wind knocked out of her. You can't even tell what's real and what the fart jokes are. 
Uh, Mateau was rushed to a hospital with chest pains. What? The? She feared were symptoms of a heart attack. <laughs> Those are just fart pains, right? <laughs> After undergoing a battery of tests, including blood work and an EKG, Mateau was told that her pain was the result of her steady diet of gas-inducing beans and eggs. Is that her in the doctor's yeah. in the hospital? <laughs> She's all shitted out. <laughs> oh my God, she has a tired asshole. I'll wake it up. What kind of hospital is that? It looks like one of those storage facilities. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, the self-proclaimed uh, fartrepreneur had squeezed, those aren't my words, folks, <laughs> squeezed out up to 50 jars worth of farts a week to keep up with the demand and even added protein shakes to her diet to make them more pungent. <laughs> I don't know about you. I don't give a shit if it's... Uh, I can never think of a fucking hot chick. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston farting. I'd punch you right in the head. I go, what are you fucking doing? Uh, Mateau explained that she decided to launch. God, I hope this is almost over. I'm getting queasy. <laughs> yeah, life's got to be tough for you, huh? <laughs> Mateau, <laughs> there should be some fat, ugly broad farting into a job. <laughs> Uh, Mateau explained that she decided to launch. How sick of guys, though? Seriously. That's how crazy. You think, I don't know, I could be wrong here. You know, Brad Pitt started farting into jars and women will be going crazy. Yeah, eh, today, maybe. Uh, Mateau experienced, uh, excuse me, explained that she uh, decided to launch her butt business on a whim, blah, blah, blah after getting requests. As luck would have it, once I put up the jars for sale, they began to sell like hotcakes. I couldn't my, believe my dad bought the first hundred. <laughs> I honestly could not believe the demand. I think a lot of people have the, a lot of people, probably girls too, have this fetish in secret. I don't. I, uh, if I see a baby being changed at an airport, I'll <laughs> run over and I'll kick the mother right in the head. I began this venture by eating mostly protein muffin shakes and also hard-boiled eggs. She said she decided to branch out a little bit and tried some new recipes to keep it exciting. <laughs> She's going to put out a book, fucking shit recipes. She'll be on the top. The natural gas manufacturer's menu also included black bean salad, onion, and ham and pepper omelets. And she's making money selling her butts. You're entitled to shit. Sure am. $200 worth. That is it for today, ladies and gentlemen. What a show. New York City passing, literally, taking away laws. If you're a criminal in this country and you're not on, not on a train or hitchhiking in New York, oh, you could, you could stay in San Francisco again. Anyways, uh, that is it. Don't forget the comicsgym.com, nickdip.com, cameo.com. If you want me to roast a friend or a relative, go to cameo.com. Click on my profile. That explains. I'll make a video on my phone. We'll zing the person for a few seconds, minutes. It's a lot of fun. It's not like selling my farts, but it's, <laughs> it covers the light bill once in a while. That's it. You guys think it, I'll say it. You're very welcome. We'll see you back here tomorrow for the final day of the week. Bye.